What up? Um, this is Billy, <laughs> and I wanted to talk about this thing that was on my mind. This concept of performing. I've come to the, it's pretty obvious to me that everything is a performance, you know? We're always performing. Um, we are social creatures, humans, and we assess ourselves through other people's approvals and disapprovals. And so we're performing. That's something we do. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I remember uh, I would go to church with my neighbors and it was a big, it was like a little Baptist church. I said big, I don't know why I said big. It was, it was a little Baptist church and uh, they had, um, you know, it was big energy, man. Big energy, big dancing and laughing and people would go in the crowds and, and catch the Holy Ghost and all that stuff. It was that kind of energy. And when I, one day he pulled up, he said all the people under the age of 16, I don't know. He, he said some young group of, he wanted the young men to get up on the stage. And I was one of them, right? So let's say this, maybe he pulls up like nine of us. And I might, I was number, I was number three. So the first person kid, the first kid comes up and he comes up and says this incantation over his head and then just boom, snuffs him, snuffs him back, <laughs> you know, in the face. And the kid hits the wall and then starts performing. He starts catching the Holy Ghost and screaming and he drops to his knees and praying. The second kid goes up. He does the same thing. The pastor goes and says something and then boom, mushes him in the face. The kid starts to do all kinds of stuff, jumps up. He's doing like even like the whirling dervish joint. He's moving around spinning, you know. I said, man, you're doing too much. You know what I mean? You're doing too much. But um, so it's my turn. And but but in truth, I'm laughing now. But it was like back then it was I wasn't sure if I wasn't sure what was happening. But I knew that I, I was up and I, I was interested to see what this feeling would be, you know, and boom, the pastor comes and hits me. Boom. And I stumble back a bit. I wait <laughs> and I don't have the experience, you know, but I look the pastors looking at me, the crowds looking at me. This is all in a matter of a second, two seconds. It's not a long thing, but I don't know what happens if I don't do the thing. And so I started doing the thing, man. I started doing the thing. I'm, you know, I'm catching the Holy Ghost and, and all this stuff. I'm performing, you know. Um, I don't know what happens. I never got the opportunity. I never tested it, you know. Um, apart from church, I used to perform toughness. I used to perform tough guy stuff as a kid, yo, because I lived in an environment that um, for at least two years of my life, I lived in a, an environment that required that of you. I remember getting caught up in slap boxing all the time. I was like, what, what is this? Why are we slap boxing again? You know, I just <laughs> trying to chill and we'd be slap. I'm chilling and you know, somebody just walk up on you. Come on, son, put your hands up, put them up, you know? And you were slap boxing and who did that? Why'd that happen? I don't know. And sometimes it turns serious all of a sudden. And it's like, whoa. and apart from that, just generally you had to, you had to perform toughness. And if you didn't perform it well enough, you get it beaten into you. People would toughen you up. And it was a source of pride. It was a thing that people would do, you know? Weird. I remember when uh, in college now, fast forward, man, shout to Patrice Gervais, a good friend of mine who um, encouraged me to do an internship with Congressman Tim Bishop, who's the congressman in the district where I went to college, which is Stony Brook University. Played football at Stony Brook University. I loved it there and I had a lot of fun. And uh, um, I applied for the internship and I was an intern for a year and a half, about two years. And, you know, at the end of it, at, in like the summer before, after graduating, the congressman invited me to be a member of his full-time staff in Washington, D.C. And it was crazy for me. And I was like, but this is a little backstory, yo. I, we're in the district office is where you, you know, in Long Island, the Congressman's district office. And, uh, you know, you handle constituent affairs mostly in that office. And so you're dealing with constituents. People come in, they need issues with, with uh, different federal assistance. And, and we would handle that. Every now and again, the people from Washington, D.C. would come through. 
and the people from Washington, D.C. had a completely, at least in my mind, man, they had a completely different polish, man. They'd come in with their suits and they're almost walking in slow motion, you know, and they would go in the room sometimes and they would have like D.C. office meetings and we'd be working. And by the way, when you're an intern, all you're doing mostly is licking uh, envelope stamps and licking um stamps and 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 not mostly we did some other stuff too but it was a lot of that it was a lot of that um so yeah i'm just looking at stamp and seeing the dc people going in the in the office you know and and have this like these big policy meetings that seemed really deep and interesting and powerful to me and i, I was really excited about like wow that would be a cool place to to work that'd be interesting to work at plus i knew in my head i seen the Capitol on tv and shit like that all right <clears throat> He invites me, he goes, he pulls me in the room on, in the summer of 2004, summer 2004, he says, Billy, it's been great working with you as our intern and, and we want you to come to the office with me. And I go, and I look at him and I did not have, I didn't know how to act. I didn't have an example of how to be professional in this moment. I had never been offered a job before, right? Especially not a job so dope you know, coming out of school. Um, I didn't expect it and I didn't have an example, you know? So uh, the one thing I knew is I didn't, I didn't want to do this like super excited, like, oh my God, thank you, thank you. Like I had visions in my head of this overly excited um, response, you know? Uh, and I didn't want to do that. I, I tried to be professional. So what came out was, thank you. Okay, that sounds excellent. Um, I'll consider this and, and I'll let you know. I don't even know if I said consider this. I said I think I said thank you, thank you. But I was overly professional. I was super like reserved, right? Um, and the reason for that was it was just in my head. It was a story in my head about about what a professional response would be there. You know, what what could I do that? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want to show emotion. I didn't want to show the joy. I felt I had a story that that was the wrong move there, you know, and I think it was pretty visible. <laughs> and uh, the congressman and I even laughed about it later. Um, fast forward, yo, I'm in D.C. now. I'm a staff member, uh, so entry level staff assistant and doing the work. I had two suits. I had a gray suit. I had a dark blue suit. And then I had another blazer. I was like cream. Okay. That's all I had to begin with. And so, yeah, there's five days in a week. And so I'm mixing and matching. I'm putting on that you get the full blue, you get the full gray, you get the, the jacket, and then you put the pants. And then you got mad ties. That's how you really do it. I have like, t I have like 12 ties. And, uh, and I would just make it work. But in terms of how to move and how to be in this big, giant space on Capitol Hill, I had no clue. And so I started performing again, you know? Um, I just wanna say that throughout all these, I didn't know I was necessarily performing. I didn't think of it this way. Like the church example, I didn't think, oh, I'm performing. I I don't think I thought much about it at all. I simply did what I felt like I needed to do in that moment. And then I didn't really consider what had happened much, you know? Except maybe to think that something was wrong because I didn't get the experience, right? So apart from that, um, the tough kid thing. I didn't think of it as performance. I was just looking at the world like, this is what it is. This is what I gotta do. Um, and let me just do what I gotta do. You know, let me develop a sense of humor too. See if I can have fewer, the, fewer of these these fights. Um, with the congressman was probably the first time I noticed it, where I, I registered it. So I'm um, 22 years old. First time it hit me like, wait a second. That was weird. You know, what was that? Oh, I didn't have an example. And, I, and so I, I became interested in like the whole concept of it a little bit. And I think that was a triggering thing, a trigger point. So yeah, again, in DC, I, I started noticing, I was picking up my, my chiefs of staff's um, um, mannerisms and, and voice and way of being. Chief of staff was a guy uh, named Sean Sweeney, who was a really, um, I don't know if he's gonna be happy that I met him, <laughs> or I, I don't know where he is right now, but he was a chief of staff at the time and he was kind of a, big dog he knew several people over there and I just picked up his movements I started noticing my voice getting a little higher and just his his general energy it wasn't my energy it was his you know but but I was performing 
Um, so I think that I, just, those are the examples, man, I think of just like performance. And I think some of y'all, some people might not like, well, I don't perform. And I think you do. I think you probably do. And it's just a matter of not noticing it. It's like something to to observe. Obviously, in different spaces, you, you move differently. You know, you, you speak differently. You speak with a little bit more love and patience to your significant other. You <clears throat> engage in more like sports talk with a certain group of people. You engage in more like controversial talk in another space. You know, you have different incentives and different norms that you move in. And if you didn't move in them, you would have it, the space wouldn't be amenable to you. It would be, they wouldn't, you know, um, it's just something to notice and observe. And I think, I think it's so important. Part of why I'm gonna try to wrap this up here. Um, I think if you, if you don't, if you don't notice it, if you really can go through an entire year or month or whatever, not noticing any changes in performance in, in adapting to a space, then it, to me, it's a sign to either play closer attention or that need more experiences, need to be in more, I would try to like engage in, in, in more stuff. I try to get out and be around other people and, and begin to notice how that happens. Um, that's just something I would do. Um, but the big question and the reason this is important really is I think there's a question that needs to be asked and it's not asked enough, which is like, who am I performing for? Um, who am I performing for in any moment? What am I, you know, I've noticed for instance, like, you know, I, I, I'm working on homophobia. I think it's a, I think it's a problem. And I think when I was younger, I had a, a, a stronger, sense of it i was really around homophobia a lot and i performed it you know anytime i really articulated a concern for uh homosexuals it was in front of people you know i was never home alone <laughs> saying stuff saying no homo you know being concerned with like gay stuff that was for someone else to observe you know what i mean so to me that's it's like who am i performing for you get to when you <clears throat> realize that you're performing then you can pull yourself out and actually choose to perform differently and i think that that's really key so that's why you know just to close like even with last in the last video when i talk about the baby um i'm totally fine with the idea that i'm advancing or being an ally for, for, for gay people. I'm fine with that. But really, I, I'm actually seeing it as I'm, I'm talking about like the emancipation, the liberation of of black men, of everyone, because everyone can benefit from this. But the baby in this instance as a black man can benefit from freeing himself, liberating himself from whatever he's performing to. And he's actually literally on a stage when he did that. So that's a literal performance. But, but we're all engaged in these performances and they're really interesting to me. And I wonder about like how it affects behavior and how often we think that we're these totally free people doing exactly what we want. We pride ourselves in that, some of us. And at the same time, nah, we're deeply constrained. We're deeply limited in our um, capacities to behave in, in everyone's best interests, including our own best interests, because of these stories um, and this need to perform, you know? That's an interesting thing. Um, that's all I got, man. This is too long. I'm trying to make these seven minutes or less, and this is already 16 minutes. Thank you for watching. Everything's always from love. Peace.